Hello fellow scaled modelers, welcome back to, to another model tank review. It's your host Ray. The model tank that we are reviewing today is the Model Collect E75 equi equipped with the 10.5 cm KWK L68 gun. This kit is in 1 over 35th scale and yeah I don't have that much to say for the intro so let's begin. There's a lot of information that I have to say so I want to cover this quickly so I'm going to talk pretty fast. Before I start the model tank review, I'd like to give you some historical background on the tank itself. The E75 was a set replacement for the Tiger II or King Tiger heavy tank. Its original design year, according to the story on the instructions, was 1943, but it never made it to production and only existed in blueprints. The E75 was set to be equipped with three gun options, the 8.8cm gun, the 10.5cm gun, which is this one, and the 12.8cm gun. According to the instructions, this the 10.5cm gun option was set to be equipped with an autoloader that could shoot 10 to 12 rounds, uh, well, that had a fire rate of 10 to 12 rounds per minute. I am unaware of how many rounds it could shoot, well, how many rounds it had in any magazine. It's very vague in the instructions, but uh, the gun was supposed to shoot 10.5 centimeter rounds, and it could penetrate 220 millimeters of armor at 1,000 meters with very high precision. The story of this model kit, as well as a lot of other mo of model collects uh, German tanks and other tanks as well, was if the if World War II was extended by two years and it ended in 1947 rather than 1945, and this is a tank that was thought to have been introduced in, by by the Germans in I'd say 1943, according to the story here. There, there's a whole story on the instructions, and uh, here it is, as well as some other f specifications. I'm not exactly sure. If this is what it specified on the blueprints, or if this is just fictional estimates of information. So yeah, take a moment to read this real quick. You can pause the video, but uh, I'm going to continue the model review. The build of this tank, it's a pretty straightforward build. The, the quality of the molding, it's alright, not the best, not the worst. I'll explain that in, I'll explain that a little bit later, but uh... The turret does rotate, well, it does not rotate within a full 360 degree range. It is limited by one part back here on the engine deck, so if I rotate the turret all the way over here, uh, hold on, give me a sec, oh, darn it, I broke apart. But yeah, the, the, the turret uh, stops rotating after it hits this part here, same thing goes for the other side, so I just want to warn you of that. If you're trying to, if you want a turret that rotates a full 360 degrees, either do something about this part right here or don't buy the kit at all these parts here whatever these things are in the engine covers they come attached separately I, wait wait no i'm not sure if they could here give me a quick second okay so i just checked the instructions these little round parts here do not come attached separately so you will have to remove the door or remove the part here to allow the turret to traverse within a full 360 degree range the gun can elevate and depress within a very limited range However, I fixed, I glued mine to one fixed position because the gun itself was way too heavy for the system that support that allows the gun to elevate and depress. Uh, this isn't the original gun; it's a little bit shorter, and it's from an extra model kit that I had. But same thing with the original gun when I did have the original gun attached. Um, I'll explain the story with the gun a little bit later. But when I did have the original gun attached. It just kept falling down, so I ended up gluing it in place, so I wouldn't have issues with it. I'll start talking about the features of the tank itself, as well as the rest of the build. I'll start with the running gear. The running gear is, a des is designed to be fixed. The road wheels and the idler wheel back here cannot rotate or spin. However, the drive sprocket here is designed to spin, but the, the way it's mounted just simply doesn't allow it to spin and... I just end up gluing mine uh, permanently here. That gluing yours permanently really won't affect it, affect anything of the model. It might make the assembly of the tracks a little bit harder, but uh, yeah, that's the only part of the running gear that functions. Let me explain how it was very difficult to build. 
Uh, so I'll show you this part of the instructions here. So when you build the drive sprocket, you glue parts E4 and E9 together and then attach it to part B6 slash B7. I think like B6 and B7, it's, it applies to the left and right sides. Uh, so you attach it here, which already allows it to rotate, but if you rotate it too much, then the part will fall out and you have to reattach it. So part E6 is supposedly supposed to be glued onto part E9 with part B6 in between it. However, when I did try to do that, not only was it extremely hard to get part E6 into there, I just couldn't get it to touch E9, so I ended up discarding part E6 and just permanently gluing the drive sprocket onto uh, part B6. That won't re The removal of part E6 will not affect the alignment of the drive sprocket in any way, It'll just, it just won't allow it to spin within its full potential range. It'll just be fixed. Uh, for, the, for the road wheels, they, uh, the way they're mounted as well, the road wheel has a hole and this, the suspension has a stub. And you're supposed to put the stub in the hole. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, you're supposed to put the stub into the hole and the, the fit is very loose. So you have to glue these permanently here for them to stay. So if you're trying to build an RC or remote control or working suspension type thing, do not buy this kit, okay? I'll just tell you that right now. Now for the assembly of the tracks. The tracks, they are individual plastic links. Well, most, most of them are individual plastic links. However, there are stretches of tracks that are pre-assembled. Um, I'm not exactly sure how many track links are in each pre-assembled part, but I'll tell you one thing, it is very, very hard to build, and there are quite a few blemishes that I, and issues that I did have with the tracks. Um, I actually built this side first, and the part where I did have the most issues, which kind of ticked me off a bit, was in the back, in the back here. Let me zoom in on that for you. So as you can tell back here, I had an alignment issue with the tracks, so yeah, it, it I just really don't like the way that they're uh, put together, so, so yeah, it's just a very difficult process. Also, I want to explain this because I almost missed this step. The tracks, well, the way that you mount the tracks does matter, so, oh, I had a spare track link on me, but uh, now I don't, oh, I can just use the one to the turret. So if you look closely, the way the tracks are designed is that there is a short end here and then there's these uh, guide pins, I'm not sure what they're called, but there's these guides here that allow the tracks to go between the wheels and there's a long edge. This long edge out here is supposed to be on the, outs on the outside here. So this is the long edge, the short edge faces the inside of this of the hull. Uh, so one... There is no left or right side of the tracks, you just have to put it that way, so one side will be facing one way and the other side will be facing the other way. Uh, if I worded that confusingly, you can ask me in the comments and I can just try and word it correctly for you there. But yeah, it, it's very hard to explain. Alright, enough complaining, I know I've already wasted 8 minutes of your time, but uh, don't worry, we're almost done. Now for the tank, it's for the rest of the tank itself, it's a pretty straightforward build. Uh, nothing too difficult actually, I expected this to be a lot more difficult, but it's very smooth and very just simple, straightforward. You don't have much uh, to customize, you don't get to choose where you want to put your uh, pioneer tools and tank tools and everything. And yeah, I don't remember having any other issues with anything up here. So I'll just bring up the tank close to you guys so I so you guys can have a closer look at some of the parts of the tank. And yeah. Here's the front of the tank. Just have a quick look at that. Here's the rear. Here's the engine parts. Also, some of you might have noticed this little marking here. That's actually a U.S. Civil Defense logo because I, I don't know why, but I do like adding that on my tanks because it just looks cool. It's just a fictional part. Here's the engine deck. Let me uh, move the turret. Here's what the engine deck looks like. There's no photo etch, which I was kind of disappointed about, and there's no engine interior, so don't don't be too disappointed about that. Before I continue, uh, so there, 
on most German tanks, there is a jack here, well, a jack that uh, was allowed for the tankers to uh, maintain the suspension. And the way that the jack is mounted here is that it sticks out of the back here, of the back of the engine deck here. Well, not engine deck, but back of the rear of the hull, which I didn't find that too cool. And just, it's very unrealistic, very, like, half-assed molding. Sorry for the expression, but very bad quality molding, so I ended up just leaving that part out, and it's not that big of a detail anyway. I'll continue with the other side of the tank. Tank, not tank. Sorry about that. I said that weird. Now up to the turret. By the way, if you see this hook here, it's broken. I broke it by accident, so yeah, sorry about that. Uh, not much to see on the turret, just it exists. It's the front. Here's the other side. For the attachment of the spare tracks, once you finish the suspension and the tracks and everything, you will you will certainly end up with more than enough spare track links to glue onto the sides of the turret. And there are little hooks that uh, are included with the kit itself that allow you to fit the tracks on there or just put the hooks on there to show that the spare track was used. However, I didn't include those hooks because one, they're very hard to glue on, and two, they don't fit into the tracks. So if you do intend on adding spare tracks, do not add those hooks and just glue the tracks directly to the side of the turret like, like shown. Also, these hooks here uh, that I mentioned earlier, there are no pins or, any, or like holes that you put them into. You can customize the way you want them. But uh, to, attach, to attach them successfully, I highly, highly recommend using Tamiya Extra Thin uh, Quick Setting Cement. That stuff was a savior for me in this kit, and I do recommend using that for like any small parts like hooks and um, hint, well, um, what are these things called? These things. I'll just refer to them as that. Those things. All right. So if, if the camera would focus, uh, so the whole story about the gun. Sorry about that. So the story about the gun. The gu the original gun was way too long in my opinion. I didn't like it that much, so I just said screw it and took the 10.5 centimeter gun from my uh, VK 72.01K kit uh, by Amusing Hobby and swapped out the guns from there. And then I cut off the muzzle brake. I'm very sorry, I have a quick interruption. I'm sorry, let's leave off where I left off. So the muzzle brake here is from the original gun, but the gun barrel assembly up to here is not original. And uh, yep, that's it. So that's it for the model review. I mean, I'm not too sure I'd recommend this kit because the kit isn't exactly as high quality, but it's not as expensive either. I got mine for like 40 bucks. I still think it's a little bit pricey given the quality, but uh, yeah, I guarantee the prices are going to go down over time, hopefully. So yeah. I recommend this kit to a intermediate to advanced level scaled modeler. Make sure you have all of the proper supp supplies to uh, build the tank itself. And yeah, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, objections, anything that I missed, feel free to drop them down into the comments. I will respond as soon as possible. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, comment, subscribe. Links to where you can buy this kit are in the description. Uh, be sure to, to check out my other model tank reviews and be safe out there with the coronavirus stuff. I know it's getting scary. So yeah, peace out. See you guys later.